Good evening and welcome to Kindergarten's Curriculum Night. My name is Maria Conlin. I am your kindergartner's teacher. Most of you have already been introduced to me, but I do have three kids with my husband and two of my kids right now. It's a little example of who I am here. To start off our night, I'd like you to imagine your child has just graduated from high school. What are the skills you hope for them to have? I present this question because as you begin this journey with your child, you may get so bogged down on the little things that we forget the big picture. What do we dream for our children? What are our hopes for our children? And this year, your child will grow and develop so many amazing skills. And we just want to keep in mind that learning is a lifelong process and they have much time and many avenues to reach all those goals you might desire for them. Here at school, we know it's a little different this year, but we still wanna start the day off right. So we encourage you to take a look at this list of things to do in the morning to make sure your little kiddo is ready to start their day right. If your child can't come to school on that day or will not be able to log in, you still need to report that absence to the school and you can email the nurse and me if you'd like, but emailing the nurse is the most important thing. Our morning and afternoons have been going wonderfully. Um, feedback is still much appreciated. Our morning kind of looks like a whole group time from nine to 10, then independent time, specials, Afternoon again, we have that whole group time, then individual and small group time, where you can also include some movement and purposeful play. This again is a slow process to build our stamina. We will be introducing things and more lessons as the year progresses. These are our specials again, in case you uh, need to get that written down again somewhere, but I always link these in our Google meeting daily agendas. Our literacy block is quite rigorous. We incorporate Jolly Phonics, Fontes and Pinnell, which is our actual literacy um, you know, structure from the district. It's the uh, mini lessons and read alouds that we use. We have a writing unit of study. We use Lucy Calkins, who um, has a really intense writing program. We use a lot of her structure to incorporate writing workshop every day. And we use a Words Their Way program which develops great word study skills. Included in our literacy block also is a handwriting direct instruction program. And we use the structure of daily five to incorporate all of these things. Daily five is a structure, not a curriculum. It allows us to integrate all of these amazing things in our literacy block, and it helps kids foster some independence in their learning and allows us to meet with students individually and in small groups. Jolly Phonics is a part of our literacy and it incorporates the phonemic awareness skills that students need and it's a fun way to learn all the sounds. The Words Their Way program is a journal that you will see at home that you actually have at home with lessons that we relate the different word patterns to and you will possibly have to help your child with some of the cutting and sorting of these books. We have not started this, but this is coming in the weeks ahead. The daily five, like I said, is a structure. Within that structure, we were hoping to get kids doing this at home as well, where they will have some time to read to themselves. Then they'll read with partners. They may have to listen to literature. They may work on words and they may work on writing. Right now, when we work on words, that's our jolly phonics. That's what we're doing every day, learning new letters and learning new sounds. Our math block in the afternoon was kicked off with the literacy-based um, connection where we read those fun books of little one all the way to little 10. But we will really start embedding our University of Chicago math program lessons. We have a connected ed um, McGraw-Hill website that we use and your kids will be logging in 
to play games and do activities in that coming up soon as well. Social studies, we have some fun units that we integrate into our literacy and also to our purposeful play and our afternoon activities. These are a snippet of some of the ones we'll be working on. The zones of regulation is part of our social and emotional learning curriculum. We also use something called second steps. We integrate many things to teach our social and emotional standards. Part of kindergarten, of course, is learning how to be a student, learning how to be in school, and being mindful of our own feelings and the feelings of other, developing self-control. And we found the zones of regulation really help kids in school learn how to regulate and help themselves be more self-directed and in charge of their own feelings. So we'll be learning this coming up in the next couple of weeks, and then we use it all year long. And I'll be sending home tools for you as well that you can use at home. In science, we have mystery science as our foundation. It's where we anchor all of our science standards for the year. It is a K-1 collaborative rotation. So kindergarten and first grade learn the same things each year. And then it rotates. This year, we're doing spinning sky, lights and sounds, and plant and animal secrets. These are amazing. I love these lessons. And I'm hoping you're enjoying some of the ones we've been sending home that are extra additional topics. I included the science and engineering practices for you to look over. The reason I find this so important is that when we have purposeful playtime for kids, this is a time when children naturally do these investigating and engaging activities on their own because they're so curious about the world around them and how to interact in that world. So these science and engineering practices are embedded in all our science, but also when kids play, we see them doing and practicing these skills. That kind of brings us to purposeful play. I've put together those videos for you to understand why we want kids to play and how we want them to make their play even more meaningful and more open-ended, and we'll be including that throughout the year as well. If you need more information about the standards, please go to the website under kindergarten and look here if you're more curious. I, of course, will continue to send you information and communicate the different things we're learning throughout the year. I know it seems like so much, but we do find ways to meet the needs of all learners. Um, these are some things I thought you might be interested to know that we are always thinking about the fact that we have students at all different levels that learn differently and that will work at different pacing. We definitely differentiate our instruction. We're really working hard to try to figure out ways to do that with e-learning. The ways we ask questions, the ways we engage students, the open-ended projects we're presenting will really help kids challenge themselves. We do have a balanced literacy program, so it, it really touches on a lot of different avenues of ways for children to challenge themselves, and it hits all different kinds of levels. The Daily Five structure allows us to differentiate. Our purposeful play allows for this. We have a lot of math games and explorations, conferring with our students and small group instruction and of course, goal setting. We will encourage children to goal set and understand what their learning looks like and, and actually name what they're learning. So I can count is what we're gonna work on this week because they've been learning to count and they've been demonstrating the counting. So they are showing me their learning. We will do all kinds of assessments this year. Some are formal, some are informal. We will have map testing in October, which is a computer generated test that actually shows the different levels of students' progress because if they keep answering questions correctly on the math test, it gives them harder questions. So it's very informative to us. We have common core and district power standard checkpoints. Students work on these independently without collaborating or teacher assistance. And we also have grade level assessments that we've created. And now that it's all day kindergarten, I imagine we're gonna create more of these together as our new kindergarten team. 
Of course, we constantly are informally assessing students by our observations, by what we do when we meet with them and talk with them. Even on the computer now, I've really been observing and writing notes and, and talking with the kids and seeing where they're at and where I need to move them. And lastly, of course, you'll be getting report cards in March and June. And the report card is standard based. We do not do any grades in kindergarten. We report on the progress of certain standards and how they're moving towards mastery of those standards. Progress is shared with you through communication, as I said, through parent emails, um, notes, conferences. Our big thing for kindergartners is our learner qualities. Um, you can read over that, but I use the academic vocabulary with students so they know as they, even little people, that they are working to be respectful and responsible citizens. They wanna produce quality work that they want to collaborate with their classmates, <clears throat> excuse me, and that they want to be self-directed learners. We want to teach our little guys here how to be students and how to be happy about being students and how to cooperate in school. Longfellow Larks was something really fun that was established a few years ago. It's Longfellows, a responsible kind and safe. It's a school-wide commitment of our wonderful community of learners. We have a little chart here that the kids um, have right up all over the school. So it reminds them to be responsible, kind, and safe, and it tells them what that looks like in all different places in the school. And we can always refer back to it to redirect them and to reteach them about those important life skills, being responsible, kind, and safe. We have an amazing system in at Longfellow it's called the house system. And I'll be giving you a lot more information about this, but it's coming to our kindergartners soon. We're gonna be placing them in houses, kind of like the Harry Potter thing, if you're familiar with Harry Potter. We have four houses, kids are placed in that house for their entire duration of being a Longfellow Longhorn. And there's it's a lot of um, positive interaction between all the different grades and classes. Um, we meet and have assemblies. I'm not quite sure what that will look like I know we'll be creative with it, but your kindergartner will be placed in a house coming soon. We still would love you to foster some independent skills. You can peruse over here and see the things we're really focused on that I would really be reminding kids about here at school and hoping you're continuing to work on those things at home. We will be having materials pick up. We do not want to overwhelm you and have you come in here every other day. Uh, on Friday, we are going to uh, decide the next pickup for you. We've been gathering some things, but we do feel that paper and project and materials for your kids to work on without being on the computer are important. And the only way for us to get that to you is to have periodic pickups. There will not be a lot, um, but we do want to have those um, for you. Our first little project, parent homework project, um, for next week will be for you to cut apart the letters if you haven't and the numbers that we sent home. Um, if I do need parents to help out, I usually send you an email with a few days notice so that you can prepare something for your children so that if they cut it up, they might cut everything up incorrectly. So for this project, we prefer parents to it. There'll be plenty of time for kids to do their own cutting projects. This one, we'd like for them to have it be neat and orderly. Please mark your calendar for fall conferences that's coming up November 23rd and 24th. Can't wait. I'm hoping we can be in person for that, but if not, we'll Zoom it and I'll be able to share lots of information with you that I've gathered. If you'd like to contact me, the best time to contact me is through an email, please. Um, email me and I'll try to get right back to you. Um, I tend to not get the phone messages and so I'd prefer emailing. But you can have them call my classroom if it's an emergency and you really need to get in touch with me, you can always call the, have them call the classroom. If you have any questions, I'm hoping that you will write them in our comments on the Zoom and I'll try to answer them all. Otherwise, we're gonna take some time now to answer questions. Thanks for coming. And I'm looking forward to this wonderful year together with you and your child. Together, we will make um, your child reach their fullest potential.